So in your kind of studies with older people, do you ever look at bone health with relation to exercise and, and does like lifting heavy weights, does that help build bone density as you, or maintain it as you get older, I guess? Yeah, so I, I don't study that directly, but there are studies showing that that uh, weight bearing exercise, whether it's you know walking or strength training, because weight even walking is weight bearing for the bones in your legs, right? And then strength training, which is also weight bearing exercise, can improve bone density and resist some of the age related decreases in bone density during aging. Now, along the lines of the microbiome, there is some evidence of a gut bone axis, um, which I bet is going to be similar to the gut muscle axis because muscle covers bone. So, um, but I, I didn't mention it in the book because uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't come across those studies at the time, but there is evidence that uh, exercise affects the gut microbiome in ways similar to soluble fiber. So uh, in a few studies, one of them being in, uh, in young subjects, whether this is true in older adults yet is unknown because it hasn't been done. And I'm pro proposing to do that in one of my grant submissions. But uh, so they, they trained younger adults uh, uh, cardiovascular training, so uh, uh, on a treadmill for six weeks. And what they found was an increase in short chain fatty acids in their stool. So they had an increase in short chain fatty acid producing bacteria. So that effect was only found in the subjects that had a BMI less than 25. And the obese subjects with the BMI higher than 30, it didn't change the short chain fatty acids in the gut or the levels of the short chain fatty acids in the gut, which is kind of an interesting story when you mm -hmm. consider the NR and NMN story too, doesn't work in at least two studies in obese adults. So there's something about being obese that can uh, negatively affect, besides aging and age-related disease that can negatively affect, you know, the NR, NMN and the short chain fatty acid story. But for at least the younger subjects, it increased their, yeah, their, 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 their stool levels of the short chain fatty acids. So, um, so that's another approach to, to help optimize gut microbiome uh, composition and, and, you know, the production of some of its metabolites, exercise training. Right. Yes. Um, so kind of, you mentioned VO, you mentioned uh, aerobic training. So do you track your VO2 max? I mean, I know aerobics is not one of your big things, but um, just wondered. Well, I wouldn't say it's not my, one of my big things, but uh, it's a part of the, you know, it's a part of the system. Uh, so uh, the lab that I'm a component of is the Nutrition Exercise Physiology and Sarcopenia Lab. So we actually have the devices to measure VO2 max. Oh, right. So I've done that three times, but I haven't done that in the past, I don't know, five years or so. So my VO2 max was somewhere in the 40s. And this was, and, and that's not bad because, uh, I mean, compared to a, an endurance athlete, you know, someone who cycles every day or who runs marathons or, you know, is an endurance athlete, they've got VO2 maxes of 60 plus. So having a VO2 max of 40, I'm basically, you know, uh, not as good having, you know, I don't have as, my cardiovascular system isn't as powerful as theirs, but in terms of the, uh, the data on, um, things like all cause mortality, 40 is like the high end of the range. Most people are an endurance athlete. So, um, but to get to the 40s, it was around the mid 40s that my VO2 max was on a few different occasions. I was just walking. I mean, this is, you know, 15 to 20 miles a day, uh, a week of walking, you know, walking a mile to work and walking a mile back. back. Uh, so, you know, around two miles a day of walking uh, every day, seven days a week, got me to a VO2 max of in the 40s, which isn't too bad. Now, you know, I've got the treadmill behind me. Um, so cardiovascular exercises is a definite component of my approach. Um, but strength training too. So I try to do everything, you know, cardiovascular strength training, and I do flexibility training, you know, to, to make sure I'm, uh, you know, not just, uh, you know, have a lot, have a lot of muscle mass, which I don't, but to be functional, you know, where my body can move in a variety of different positions. So then I'm not just, you know, I'm only focusing on certain movements, but I can't move my body in all the directions that it can move. So I'm in some ways, mobility limited. I don't want to be mobility limited. So I do a variety of, uh, uh, stretching and calisthenic uh, exercises to maximize mo my mobility, whether it's, you know, spin kicks or, you know, uh, leg lifts, things like that. I, I do a whole bunch of, uh, yeah, mobility improving exercises and balance, you know, because to throw a kick on one leg, you've got to be able to stand on one leg reliably. So, uh, yeah, so, so stretching slash balance, this is all a part of the approach. I don't want to be 80 and uh, less functional or less mobile in any way, right? I say 80, but pick pick an older age, right? So. Right, yes. Actually, just 
a little diversion. So do you do, you do free weights or you use machines? I th we did talk about this before, but. Um, yeah. So uh, I have an 11 year old and, and uh, I mean, it's maybe it's too much information. I'm a single parent. I'm doing it, raising my daughter com almost completely by myself. So uh, that's been like that. She's 11, uh, 11 and a half now. So I've been doing it like that since, you know, for the last 10 years plus since I, we've been in Boston. So to go to the gym and come back, I, I didn't have time for that. So I actually have, you know, you can see I've got some uh, weight, weight bars, you know, mm -hmm. some, uh, and it's not an Olympic bar. The Olympic bar is 45 pounds. It's a smaller bar, but uh, so I don't have machines other than the treadmill in my apartment, Right. but I've got, you know, the weight bars and I've got, I've got free weights uh, behind me that I can stack up on the bars. A lot of what I do, I've also got a pull-up bar over here so I can do pull-ups and dips. So a lot of it is calisthenic based but I, I strength train with the weights I've got, I mean, you know, a couple hundred pounds of weights here. Not that I use all of the couple hundred pounds, but you know, I do enough to challenge myself while limiting injury. Whereas, you know, I grew up in the personal trainer culture and, you know, the fitness culture of, you know, eating protein bars and going to the gym often. And once we moved to Boston, like I said, it was harder to do that. But, um, you know, so the, my mindset used to be lift more, lift more, lift more. And I, you know, messed up my back on a lot of different occasions. So my approach now is lift a little bit less weight, minimize injury risk because nothing, few things will make you feel older than, uh, you know, you can't walk because you messed up your back. So, um, yeah, I try to train smart and challenge myself with weights as much as, as much as I can. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.